Continue our team coverage of this pandemic this evening with 17's Aton Wallace and Karen Hua. But we begin tonight with 17's Alex Fisher. A concerning trend as the seventh person in Kern County dies from COVID-19. It's the fourth death in less than two weeks. Alex is here now with a look at the numbers and what this means as more cases are confirmed. Good evening, Alex. Good evening, Tammy. Yeah, unfortunately, two deaths last week. So far this week, another two deaths. It's a concerning trend as we continue to see more cases of coronavirus in Kern County. After so long, we, we saw such a relatively low death rate. And that, that is still true now compared to other counties in California. But again, it is starting to increase just a bit. Let's take a look at the numbers and talk about uh, the latest deaths. Again, we have seven deaths in Kern County uh, so far. That is 0.8% of the total cases. So again, less than a percent here when we're talking about the total amount of cases of Kern County residents who have uh, died. So uh, again, it's seven deaths here. Uh, the first death was reported on March 27th, but take a look at these four deaths here. Uh, these two this week, these two last week. So you can see that we've kind of picked up if you will, over the last couple of weeks, which is a concerning trend. Now, the reason why I talk about this trend is because on a national scale, we've heard from doctors all across the world that talk about the peak in the amount of cases and then the peak in deaths. Now, the reason why that is, is because you first have to, you first have to be uh, tested positive for coronavirus before uh, people typically die. So that is typically what we see. You, you are confirmed first with the test results and then uh, uh, the fatality is later on. So again, they say that there's going to be some time a lag between the peak of new cases and the peak of deaths. Now, and that of course is an unfortunate trend, but we're going to be monitoring it to see if uh, we where our numbers look in the coming days and weeks. Now, we usually talk about local numbers. I'm going to broaden things out t for just a little bit, just to talk about what we've seen across the country. Unfortunately, we're rounding out this month, uh, April, on a deadly note. April's death toll in the US for coronavirus deaths was more than 60,000 people. To put things in perspective here, uh, I wanna use Dodger Stadium because I think a lot of people know exactly what that uh, feels like. Uh, Dodger Stadium capacity is 56,000 people. So that just shows you the death toll for this month alone. Uh, you know, the, the, the death toll for this whole thing across the, the country is more than 62,000. Uh, but just this month, 60,000 people have lost their life to coronavirus. And that is more people than could fill Dodger Stadium. All right, let's get back to the, the local results. We saw uh, 207 test results processed today. Uh, 27 tests came back positive for coronavirus. 181 came back negative for coronavirus. A lot of tests processed within the last 24 hours. That is a significantly higher number than what we typically see in 24 hours. So let's add all of these to our totals. A total of 902 cases in Kern County. That includes nine non-residents. Total recovered 524. Take a look at the recovery rate, 59% of this total number has recovered. That is excellent news. Unfortunately, though, 30 people are still in the hospital. That is 8.2% of the active cases in Kern County. This number, the hospitalization rate, continues to go up. Uh, as we see a recovery, you know, we see the recovery rate go up as well, uh, but we're seeing the, the hospitalization rate continue to go up uh, over the last several days. So we're monitoring that as well. Let's take a look at the curve. This is the graph that we talk about uh, that we are closely looking at. And you can see that our peak was April 9th with 63 cases. And that was 21 days ago. That, of course, is good news. But keep an eye on this area right here. You can see we have these mini spikes, if you will, with more than 41 cases. What's interesting to see here, and there's no way to confirm this at this point, but if you look at where Easter was on April 12th, you start to see a spike here um, in regards to the amount of time it takes for cases to, uh, or for people to uh, show symptoms of coronavirus. Now again, uh, that is just a look at how far it was from Eastern. You can see this kind of the spike here. So it's very interesting to see uh, this this day here and these days uh, on the other sides of it to see if there was any um, you know coincidence that uh, maybe with people being out and celebrating Easter there could have been community transmission again there's no way to necessarily uh, prove that but it just shows you how from April 
April 12th, this, uh, since then, uh, you've seen more cases. Now again, this red area right here shows how many tests are still pending. And speaking of pending tests, we've seen again another high number with more than 3,700 tests that are pending. This is the highest number that we've seen since testing started. 3,711 test results that Kern Public Health are still waiting for the results on. And we continue to track that. All of this is going to be on our website, kget.com, later this evening. I continue to track the numbers. I'll be back tomorrow night with another look. But for now, I'll send it back to you in the studio.